Okay, going through the practice test solutions, looking at question one, uh, we've got our first one here, A, we need to convert 4.7 square metres to centimetres squared. So 4.7 square metres is going to equal 4.7 times 100 times 100 uh, centimetres squared. And the reason for that is because there are 100 uh, centimetres in a metre and there are 100 times 100, 100 squared centimetres in one square metre. So 4.7 times 100 times 100 means we're shifting the decimal point over. 4, 7, 1, 2, 3 uh, square centimetres. For B, we've got 13 square centimetres, uh, cubic centimetres, sorry, um, is going to be equal to 13 times 10 times 10 times 10 or 10 cubed millimetres cubed because we've got uh, 13 uh, cubic centimetres and in each uh, centimetre is 10 millimetres. So for each cubic centimetre there's 10 by 10 by 10 cubic uh, millimetres. So this is going to be 13, 1, 2, 3 cubic millimetres. For C we've got 5.4 this probably should be cubic uh, metres because we can't convert square metres to litres because they're different units. But we know that there are 1,000 litres in one cubic metre. So that means this is going to be 5.4 times 1,000 uh, litres. So that's 5400 litres. For A, here we're asked to identify the shape. The shape, we've got two sets of parallel sides. They're not the same length, each of them. So that means that the it's not a rhombus, it must be a parallelogram. So we can write down parallelogram. For B, we're asked to calculate the perimeter. Perimeter is equal to the sum of the sides. So it's going to be 60 centimetres. Now we've got here 0.7 meters we need to put that in the same units so that's going to be 70 centimeters so plus 70 centimeters and then we know that opposite sides are going to be the same so this is going to be 60 centimeters and this is going to be 70 centimeters here so we can add 60 plus 70 here as well so that's going to be 60 times 2 plus 70 times 2, because we've got two each of those, so it's going to be 260 centimetres, or you could have converted it all to metres, and you would get then 2.6 metres. For question 2, we're asking to identify the shape on the right for C here. So this shape is a parallelogram, but we can see that all side lengths are the same. So it's not it's a special parallelogram, it is a rhombus. And D, we're asked to calculate the perimeter. So the perimeter here is going to be 4 multiplied by the 6 centimetres. So it's going to be 24 centimetres for the perimeter of this shape. Question 3, we're asked to calculate the area of these shapes. So we write down the formula. We've got a kite here. So the area is going to be a half xy, with this being x and this being y. So we substitute in then half times 4.5 times 7.5 and we get that that is equal to 16.875 square metres. We've got our units there. So remember, these are our things that we need to include. Formula, substitute in, answer, and units. Very important to include each of those different things. For B, we've got a trapezium here. Formula for a trapezium is A is equal to one half A plus B times H, one half and substitute in A is eight plus 16 times H of four. So this is going to be equal to 
uh, 1 half of 8 plus 16. 8 plus 16 is 24 times 4, which is 48 square centimetres. So once again, we've got here formula, substitute in, answer, units. Last ones here, C. We've got a triangle, area is equal to 1 half base times height. It's equal to 1 half times 5 times 2, which is going to be equal to 5 square centimetres. And D, we've got here area is equal to length times width for a rectangle. So 9 times 4, which is 36 square centimetres. A, calculate the circumference of the circle. So for our circumference, we've got the diameter here. So we can use, the diameter goes all the way across. So we can use the formula C is equal to pi D, which is pi times uh, 10. So this is going to be equal to 31.4 centimetres. Remember that circumference is all the way around the outside. So that means it's a length. That means the units are centimetres. Once again, formula, substitute, answer, and units. For B, we're asked to calculate the area. The area of a circle is equal to pi r squared. Now, r in this instance is going to be equal to the diameter divided by 2, which is 10 divided by 2, which is going to be equal to 5 centimetres. So that means our radius is 5 squared, so our answer for our area is going to be 78.5 square centimetres. We've got question 5 here. A, we're asked for the volume of the prisms. Volume here of this prism. Volume is equal to the area of the base multiplied by the height. We're given the area of the base here as 120 square centimetres times the height of 55. So the volume is going to be 6,600 cubic centimetres. Asked to calculate the volume of this prism. Firstly, we need to find the area of the base, the base here, and multiply by the height that we've got here. So the shape that we've got for the base, we could split it up into two shapes, make it a, a uh, square or a rectangle and the triangle, or we can recognise that that's technically a trapezium. So to find the area of the base, it's a half A plus B times height. A half A is 5, because 5 is all the way along here. 5 centimetres, because that, uh, sorry, 5 metres because that's directly across there, uh, plus B, the base, which is 8, multiplied by the height, so 8 is the base, height is 6, so this is going to be equal to 39 square metres. The volume is equal to area of base times height, so we get 39 multiplied by 12, which is equal to 468 cubic metres. Here we've got question six. We're asked for the capacity of the pool below in litres. So we should determine the volume first in cubic metres and then we can convert to litres. So volume is equal to length times width times height. So we've got seven times 3.5 times 1.8. Substituting those in and then writing our answer, calculating our answer, 44.1 cubic metres. We're asked for it in litres, so we can say that this is equal to 44.1 because there are 1,000 litres in one cubic metre. We can multiply by 1,000 and we get, sorry, that's in litres. And we get 44100 litres. So just going through our steps here, formula, substitute in answer. 
and then we need to convert to the value that we've been asked to because we've been asked to convert it to litres there. Okay, looking at uh, question seven here, we've got to construct a congruent statement for the two triangles. So we need to determine uh, the, these two triangles below are congruent. So that means their points match up. We're being told that they are congruent. So it means that we have one triangle is congruent to the other triangle. Now we need to make sure that the order of the um, the uh, vertices match up. So we can look and see, hey, this is 40 degrees. So this one must match D here at 40 degrees. And th so those vertices are gonna match up. And if they're congruent, then I know that they are going to look very similar. So that means that this is going to match up with this one here. And this vertex is going to match up with this one here. So if I label my first triangle A, B, C, I need to go in the same order for my second triangle. So I've gone A, B, C, I've gone blue, green, red. So I need to go blue, blue, oops, blue, green, red for my other triangle. So start at D, E, F for my other triangle. And notice I've used the congruent symbol here, three lines says that that is congruent. Three lines says that that is congruent. For B, we're asked to determine the value of the pronumerals. So we can see here for X, X is an angle and it matches up to, we can see F here matches up to C. So that means X must equal 30 degrees. And V, V millimetres is going to be equal to the 15 millimetres here because that's the same side we've got DF matches to a c so these two sides match they're the two longest sides so that means that v is equal to uh, 15 here because we're given that it's v millimeters so v is equal to 15. question eight we've got a truck that needs to leave sydney by 7 30 pm it needs to get to sydney by 7 30 pm the truck leaves brisbane at 04 20 hours on Monday and arrives in Sydney at 17.30 hours the same day. Evaluate whether it arrived in time. So if it's arrived in Sydney at 17.30 hours, we need to say, has it arrived on time or has it not arrived on time? The time it needed to get to Sydney, time required, is 7.30 p.m. The time arrived is 17.30. So if, if we need to say is 17.30 before or after 7.30 p.m. So to convert it, we need to take away um, 1,200 and that will give us the value of the time in PM, okay? To convert it to uh, from 24 hour time to 12 hour time. So taking away 1200, we get 5.30. So this means it's 5.30 PM. And we can say, therefore, the uh, truck arrived on time. In time. The second part says, determine the time difference between the goal arrival time and the actual arrival time. So B, we uh, actual arri actually arrived, actual arrival is equal to, was uh, 5.30 p.m. And then the goal time is 7.30 p.m. And so the difference is two hours. Exactly. Okay, so that's the difference between those two times. Another way you could potentially answer A and B is rather than converting from uh, 24 hour time to 12 hour time, you could take this time and convert it back to uh, the 24 hour time and then it'd be easier and it'd be easy to show um, the difference in times because you can just subtract the two away but it's easy to see for these particular times that the difference between them is two hours.
question nine, we're asked here uh, a cylind cylindrical jar with a height of 30 centimetres. So we've, we've been given a description here. One of the best things to do for a question like this, I can straight up see I'm going to have uh, some sort of volume. So I've got a, I, I think I should draw a diagram to make sure it's nice and clear for me. I'm going to draw it underneath here, uh, a cylindrical jar. So I've got a cylinder here, draw it very, very rudimentarily. Um, but it doesn't need to be neat, it just needs to be a nice clear drawing. A height of 30 centimetres, so labelling the values that we have here, and a diameter of 10 centimetres, so all the way along the bottom here is 10 centimetres. It's packed with 75 lollies, so there are 75 lollies inside here. Each lolly is shaped like a rectangular prism with a length of two centimetres. So if I can draw one of the individual lollies now, it's a rectangular prism here, rectangular prism, uh, with a length of two centimetres, two centimetres, a width of 1.5 centimetres and a height of 0 0.5 centimetres. Determine how much space in the container is not taken up by lollies. So if I put lollies in here, the difference, that the amount of air that's going to be there is the difference in these two values. So if I find the volume of our cylinder, then take away the volume of all of the lollies, then that will be the volume that is air. So the volume that is air is going to be equal to the volume uh, of the cylinder minus the volume of the lollies. So what's the volume of a cylinder? Well, it's the area of the base times the height. And the area of the base is pi r squared times the height of the cylinder. If I take away the volume of the lollies, there are 75 lollies. So 75 times the volume of, the, uh, of all of the lollies is in their rectangular prism. So length times width times height. So now I can substitute in pi the radius of our of our um, cylinder here is only five centimetres it's because the diameter is 10. So this is pi times five squared multiplied by the height of 30 centimetres minus 75 times the length of each lolly. So the length is two times 1.5 times 0 0.5. And we'll see what answer we get. So working this one out, pi times five squared times 30 minus 75 times 2 times 1.5 times 0 0.5 and we get that 2,243.69 cubic centimetres is air. Now we should probably round this, this is a bit of a ridiculous number so let's just round it to the nearest uh, cubic centimetre. So here if we look um, look at the nearest cubic centimetre, we want to look to the number to the right of it because it's a, a five or above, we round up. So we've rounded up from three to four here. So 2,244 cubic centimetres is the volume taken up, not taken up by lollies. So we need to, we've been asked a question using words, so we need to say therefore the volume not taken up by lollies is 2,244 cubic centimetres. So strategies for solving a problem like this. Drawing a diagram is super helpful. Then what I did was I wrote a mathematical statement, an equation that tells us the relationship between the volume of, of space that's going to be left in there is going to be equal to the difference between those two other volumes. Then substituted in and worked out exactly um, the value that we're looking for, the volume not taken up by lollies. Question 10, we've got a roller coaster with a circular loop with a diameter of 10 metres. So once again, draw a diagram. We've got a circular loop here, diameter of 10 metres, 10 metres all the way across, 10 metres. Jared claims that if he rides the roller coaster loop five times, he will have travelled the equivalent of 450 metres. So if he goes around the loop five times, then that will equal 450 metres. So evaluate if he is correct. We need to check. We need to check. That's what evaluate means, to judge, to make a judgment. Check if he is correct. So 
let's have a look at if he will be correct. So essentially what we're trying to find is five times the circumference. So we, if we work that out, the five times the circumference is going to be five times pi d. So five times pi d, the diameter we've got is uh, 10 meters. So if we work this out, we get 157.08 meters. So if I travel around this roller coaster loop, I've gone and I go around five times, that's going to be 157.08 meters. So we can say, therefore, Jared is not correct. as he only travels approximately 157 metres. Answering in a question once again. So remember those steps, draw a diagram, write a mathematical statement, solve the statement by substituting in and answer in words. Question 11, Tamika has a square garden bed with an area of 16 square metres. She wants to pave around the outside of the garden bed with square tiles, each with a side length of one metre. So let's draw our diagram. We've got our square garden bed. So square garden bed and each side length is 16 square metres. She wants to pave around the outside. So there's going to be tiles all around the outside not to scale obviously, and each of these tiles has a side length of one metre. Side length one metre. Calculate the perimeter of the tiled garden bed. So the perimeter of the tiled garden bed, we need to remember here that we've got, we've added on tiles all the way around. So we've added on an extra metre here and an extra metre here. One metre here, an extra metre here, and an extra meter here. So how much have we actually added on to our garden bed? Well, we've added on two meters either side. So that makes our new square 18 meters by 18 meters. So we're asked for the perimeter of the tiled garden bed. That means we're looking at uh, A being perimeter is four times 18. So four times 18 means the new perimeter of our garden bed is going to be 72 metres all the way around. B is asking the new area of the square garden bed. So looking at the garden bed, including the tiles, we've said it's 18, so area is equal to side length squared. It's going to be 18 squared. So that means our garden bed area is going to be 32, 324 square metres. So we can say, therefore, the uh, new garden will have a perimeter of 72 metres and area 324 square metres.